Hello and welcome, my name is Michael and this tutorial's topic is 10 essential Adobe After Effects tips. Two quick things before we start. First, there's an overview over the topics including jump marks in the description of this video. So if you know about a topic already, you can easily skip it. Second, I started a Patreon page recently and this tutorial wouldn't have been made without the support of the patrons over there. But nevertheless, we're still far away from anything remotely close to be called sustainable. So if you're going to learn something from me today, it would be great if you'd check the site out and maybe become one of my patrons. One of my mates on Twitter asked, how should I even start with After Effects? Unfortunately, I can't fit a whole introduction into a 10 quick tips video. But here's a very brief overview of the most essential things. The UI is split into your project panel, where you see all your assets. Be aware that external assets won't be saved inside the file, they're just reference. So don't delete or move the source and keep a clean and organized project folder outside of After Effects as well. The viewport panel, where you see your actual camera output and can draw shapes and masks on. This stack of self-descriptive panels, like for example the preview panel that handles all your animation previewing settings. And the timeline, where you edit and animate your layers. Layers can be imported assets like film footage vector files, sounds, bitmap files and so on, or After Effects natives like compositions, solids, nulls, text layers, shape objects and more. Each layer has individual properties such as opacity, position, rotation and so on, which you can animate using keyframes. To create keys, you toggle on the little stopwatch icon of a property. Every time you change that property at some point, After Effects creates a new keyframe for you. The frames in between are getting interpolated, what makes up the animation. When you add an effect to a layer, its properties and animatable parameters will also be listed here. But there's also a dedicated panel for the effect properties next to the project panel. A composition in After Effects is like a box within a box. You can double click a composition to enter its timeline, which runs parallel to the timeline of the parent comps. This way you can make encapsulated animations or just bring some order into your files, for example if you want to add an effect to a group of layers. To do that, you pre-compose them by selecting them and hitting Ctrl Shift C. And then you simply add the effect to the new composition. The top menu carries all the functions of After Effects and is way too much to be explored in a short tutorial. But most of the stuff you need at the beginning, like how to save a project, is at the same place as in any other Adobe software. Lastly, I can also recommend having a look at the animation presets which you can study and dissect to learn about effects and animations. Navigating the timeline. I'm not a big fan of tutorials just telling you about keyboard shortcuts, but these are so essential for you to navigate quickly that I summed up my most used for you. Hitting U on layers is expanding only the properties with keyframes on. J and K are used for jumping back and forth from keyframe to keyframe. Page up and page down for moving one frame back or forth in time. Hold shift additionally to increase it to a 10 frames interval. Press I or O for jumping to the in or out point of the current layer. Use the square brackets to move the selected layer's beginning or end point to the current time indicator's position.
B and N are used to define beginning and end of the work area, which defines your preview range and can define your render range. Last but not least, Control shift c to put all selected layers into an own composition, a method often referred to as pre-comping. To browse all shortcuts, go to Help and then down to Keyboard Shortcuts. This will open the Overview website in your browser. Changing the anchor point. The anchor point defines from where all transformations of a layer originate from. In most other software packages, you would refer to it as pivot point. There are two main ways to change the anchor point. First is to open the properties of the layer and hack in some numbers into the anchor's fields. When doing this, it actually looks like it doesn't move the anchor but the layer, what you often don't want. The alternative is to use the pen behind tool to change the anchor point. Activate it, then look for the little anchor symbol and simply drag it to the desired position. A lot of otherwise more complex animations can be achieved by putting the anchor point to another position. Here are some quick examples. Moving along a path. If you want to move a layer along a path, like this little car here, you first need a path. I designed this whole scene in Illustrator, so it's the most convenient way to create the motion path there as well. Your Illustrator artboard should have the dimension of your video, so that everything will be in the right place when transferring it. Unfortunately, After Effects centers all paths it receives via copy and pasting from Illustrator. But we got a workaround for that. In Illustrator, you should have two paths. One that will be the motion path, and the second one exactly the size of the artboard. Next, it gets a tiny bit tricky, so I am giving you breaks to pause between the steps. Ready? First, copy both paths in Illustrator by selecting them and hitting Ctrl C. Switch back to After Effects and create a solid by hitting Ctrl Y. Select the solid layer and hit Ctrl V to paste the paths. This will create two masks exactly in place. Open the mask properties by hitting the M key, click the mask path property of the motion path and hit Ctrl C to copy it. Now select the little car layer, expand it and click the stopwatch of the position property to keyframe it. Last but not least, hit Ctrl V to paste the path. You can delete the solid now as it fulfilled its only purpose. If your motion path is one of the rare kind being centered on the artboard originally, you can save all the solid layer steps and directly paste the path from Illustrator. Okay, nice, the car is now following the path. But hey, why isn't it rotating accordingly? Don't waste a second thinking about keyframing the rotation. Instead, do the following. Right click the layer, go to Transform and then down to Auto Orient. In the pop-up, choose Orient Along Path. And voila, 
Our little car now gets rotated according to the curve's normals. Just in case you are not working with Illustrator, you can do all the previous steps by drawing a mask with a pen tool in After Effects and then copying as described before. How to scale timing. Sometimes you want to make a segment of your animation faster or slower, but you already have a lot of keyframes in between that segment. Before you go in and move all keys individually, while probably messing up your timing, do this. Select all keyframes you want to scale the timing of. Then hold down the Alt key while clicking and dragging the last keyframe around. And there you go, you are adjusting all keyframes at once. Swapping footage. Sometimes it happens that you need to swap out an animated asset on your timeline and you can't just solve it by pre-composing. In that case, just click the layer you want to replace, then go to your project panel, hold down Alt, while you click and drag the new asset onto the layer you selected before and drop it. And voila, the assets have been swapped and all animations and keyframes have been transferred and still work as before. Using nodes for everything. That's a pro tip I often not use myself and always regret in longer projects. You can use nodes, which are empty layers, to drive other layers animation. You can either use expressions for that, or for the simplest form of parenting, you can use the so-called parent pick whip. You can either parent a whole layer's properties to the null, so that it acts like it's pre-composed with the null, or just parent individual properties. This is making your file very flexible for feedback and changes, while also speeding up your workflow in the long run. A pretty cool addition lately is the functionality to use nulls to drive vector points of a shape object, or the other way around. You find that function a bit hidden under window and then create nodes from paths. Unfortunately, it doesn't create nodes for the tangent handles. If you need that kind of deep control, you find free scripts and plugins online for that. Links are in the description of this video. Sequence layers. When I started with After Effects, one of the most time consuming tasks was to sequence a huge bunch of layers, tediously dragging one by one around, simply because I didn't know better. So if you're a beginner, be lucky you never have to do that. Just select all layers, right click on one in the timeline and go to keyframe assistant and then sequence layers. If you want them to overlap, you can enter the amount of frames that shall overlap here. If not, leave it blank and each layer will start one after another. Use free plugins. After Effects is extremely extendable, so plugins became a whole market on their own. Besides huge and expensive ones, here are two free ones I highly recommend. First is Animation Composer, that comes with a lot of animation presets and ready-made precoms, which you can either directly use for your projects or dissect for educational purposes. It also comes with a handful of awesome tools, like the Keyframe Wingman and the Anchor Point Mover. The keyframe wingman lets you edit the easing of keyframes very quickly without you having to fiddle around in the graph editor.
and the anchor point mover lets you quickly realign the anchor point of a layer. It's made by Mr. Horse and you find the link in the video's description. And then there is DUIK or DUIK, which is so huge that I could make a whole series of tutorials about it. It is the ultimate rigging tool for After Effects. If you don't know what rigging means, it is essentially giving your character a skeleton where each bone is in relation to each other, so you can animate it a bit like a shadow puppet. But DUIK is so feature rich that you can use it for all kind of things outside of character animation as well, like adding controls to shape objects, points and tangents. I highly recommend checking it out. Link is in the description. Using After Effects for web and apps. Using the Body Movement plugin by Hernan Torisi in conjunction with Lottie by Airbnb lets you export shape layer animations as JSON files, which can be used for HTML5 websites, web apps and native apps. Nice, isn't it? You just extended your range of clients by the whole interaction design field. Both tools and their installation are very well explained on the Lottie page. Link is in the description of the video. Illustrator to After Effects tricks. There are different ways of getting your illustrator vectors into After Effects. For example, via copy and paste to be used as masks and motion paths, as described in tip number three. For vector compositions, the most trouble-free and convenient way for me is to set up a file in Illustrator using the HTTV template. That way, the artboard and color mode matches with the settings of my composition. If you work in 4K or any other format, it's of course recommended to use the corresponding dimensions. Each object I want to animate individually gets its own layer in Illustrator. Naming the layers on creation saves you time and trouble later on. Save the AI file and switch to After Effects. Double click in the project panel to import footage. Find and select your AI file and in the import as drop down select composition retain layer sizes. Hit import and voila, After Effects created a comp in the size of our artboard containing all of our layers. If you want to scale your vectors up without the lines getting pixelated, don't forget to check the little box with the sun icon to enable continuous rasterization. If you want to actually animate the paths of an object, you can create shape objects from any illustrator layer. Just right click the layer, go to create and then create shapes from vector layer. This will give you access to all the special shape object properties. That's it for now. A lot of tips I collected over the years didn't make it into the video, like talking about expressions or showing you some tricks with a puppet tool. But hey, you might want to consider supporting me on Patreon to fund the creation of new videos covering those topics. A huge shout out and a big sorry if I pronounce your names wrong to this month's top supporters. Zero the Ghost, Abdul Zainos, Chen and Joe Heskov. Thank you so much for your support. You made this tutorial happen. Goodbye for now and happy creating.